Hello everyone, I'm the Black Shadow here, and welcome back to more for Top 5, the series where I take a specific subject for doing Imperium, and I give you my tips and tricks to help improve your game. We're still looking through the leaders for Dune Uprising, and today it is the turn of the Grand Emperor himself, Shaddam Carino IV. So other than the fact that Shaddam is played by Christopher Walken in the movies, which means that you should basically win every game you play as Shaddam, automatically uh, he is officially an optional character he is available as part of the Choa module which introduces the contracts bits and pieces and stuff like that which isn't mandatory to play in this game but as we talked about on our review of uprising on this channel you should play with every single game makes a better game it's not that complicated so just just use it kids that's my honest opinion for you so assuming you're in the Choa module uh shanam will be available for you Shadam does benefit from not being hideously complicated, but he does have some very strange quirks to him, which means he has to kind of be used a bit particularly sometimes. Uh, naturally, he's a leader very suited to going towards alliances and victory points made by spices flows and that sort of thing. Uh, and he potentially has one of the strongest rings in the entire game. But occasionally, he also can get into trouble because of it and a requirement. You feel like you should use his ring ability. We'll talk about that more in a moment. Regardless, I still think he's a pretty decent leader. Um, I think he benefits a lot from kind of watching your opponents and kind of like letting them take chunks of each other, especially in combat, um, and then kind of moving in when the time is right. It's about watching and waiting for your moment. So let's have a look at his passability for tip number two here. Sadu Car Commander. At the start of the game, you set aside both the Sadu Car contracts and only you can acquire them during the course of the game. Now, this is a funky little ability, which I think if you ask different people will give you different estimations on strength. The way it works is that when you have the Chiron module as part of your setup, when you do uh, your leader drafting and that sort of thing, uh, you will also get to see the opening two contracts of the game. These are revealed before uh, you do any actual physical drafting. It's part of up. It's step A3 or A4 or something like that. So you get to see contracts. You get to see uh, the Imperium row, your cards and that before you start picking any leaders. Taking Carino here, will mean that you get exclusive use of those contracts. Those contracts are set aside, and that means that if they're in the pile, you dig them out. And it also does mean that if any of them are in the opening uh, row here, that those are also removed as well, and then you replace the module once that has been taken. Um, it does not mean you get access to these immediately. These are not put on your player board. It's not how that works. Instead, they are set aside for your exclusive use. So the question, and the tip ultimately, is what value does Sardaukar Commander have for you playing as Carino? And I think the truth is that it varies significantly. Uh, there are some games you play as Carino where you'll be able to get hold of one or maybe even both of these contracts and get to do a lot of action compression at the Sardaukar space. Bear in mind, it is this space in particular does not include dutiful service. And there's going to be some games of Carino that you're going to play and you won't even consider them. You won't ever get around to like even think about grabbing them. It just doesn't suit your play style. I think there is a lot of mitigating factors to that. It depends basically, are you going to go Sadukar or not? If so, you should probably consider getting at least one of these contracts. But you want a card that's going to help you get there. You know, you might not want to send your diplomacy to Sadukar. There's a lot of other spaces you want to go to. So cards that you might want to go there with might be the likes of Sadukar Coordination is an obvious example. If you can get this, as Shaddam and you can get hold of especially like the recall agent contract for Sadukar that suddenly makes that space really really scary for your opponents because they know that you might go there and not only are you going to do it you're also stalling as well you get to pull up another agent which means you're going to have a uh, better action economy you get to see what your opponents do you're going to get the last action a lot of the time and you can put your opponents in some really really wretched spots the double card draw i personally don't value quite as much it's a bit more different focus i think the recall agent is typically just better but the double card draw is also not too bad it's a nice interesting way of setting Sadukar as just like a big massive setup term like in a round five or round six to garrison up uh get some intrigues draw a load of cards for example um and like basically have a big set around maybe buy a spice must flow and then round seven look to really crack in but I, I do think that this is probably the better contract of the two this is where I think some of the subtlety of Shaddam and knowing when to pick him kind of comes in here. If you're considering taking Shaddam, I think you should always have a look at what the opening uh, contracts are. 
and kind of make an assessment. Like, for example, in this situation here, if there are contracts that you think are going to be difficult for you to achieve or you're not going to get much value for uh, for quite a while, then maybe having the options of your Sardar card contracts on the side as options to you and you alone might be quite attractive. This is something you can possibly look to play into while other players are kind of picking from contracts that might not suit them either. But alternatively, if the contracts on the opening row are pretty strong and very desirable or just super easy to get and are going to enable your game nice and early, then these options suddenly don't look so good. So let's talk about Shadam's ring next. Emperor of the Known Universe. So it's a little bit complicated, but it's not too bad. Uh, when you play the ring, you get a choice of two things you can do. You can either gain a Solari and a troop, which is pretty good. Or you can spend free Solari to get a wild bump with any faction of your choice, which is very, very strong indeed. Just need that money resource. However, once you play your ring, you cannot deploy any units to the conflict for the rest of that turn. And that's a huge, huge condition. What it means is that every time you use your ring, you can't contribute to combat. It's meant to represent Shaddam kind of, you know, being the Emperor. Can't be seen to be getting involved in all these sort of situations, but is still doing his machinations in the background. So let's talk about the good and the bad for the ring. First off, it means that uh, this is a very nice resource generator early on. Again, building up those troops and building up the Solari to get you yourself uh, better actions and better stuff to do later on in the game. Uh, the troop extra is really nice because it can be hard to generate that a little bit. And obviously, mid to late game, the bump is awesome. We'll talk about that more in a moment. However, it means that if you're going to use your Signet Ring, you need to find places to send it that are not these spaces. And that means that typically, you're going to be sending your ring somewhere up the top end of the table so a lot of early games can be spent maybe to accept contract uh, is a very common place to look to put it uh, as that is obviously drawing you a card uh, you're getting a contract as well which as we mentioned would be pretty good for you it's a nice way for you to get your Sardaukar contracts while you're using your ring um, and it's ignoring the fact that you can't deploy anyway from here uh, gather support can also be pretty decent and assembly hall is a really nice compression you know an intrigue a persuasion a troop and a solari uh, for sending your ring here is a pretty nice going. But of course, what you're only attempting to do is to get your signet ring to shipping. This is the spot that Shadam Karina the Fourth wants to be at for as much of the game as humanely possible. Because if you can get your signet ring here with the free spice, you are effectively turning Known for the Known Universe into two wild bumps, or more effectively, what it usually ends up being, a wild double bump, which is enormous in a game like this when faction access is not easy to come by. And even getting hold of your friendship sometimes can be a bit outside of your reach. It means that if Shadam can start shipping and sending his ring there, he will devastate his opposition on the alliance tracks he can take multiple alliances sometimes without much contest at all depending on who his opponents are so that means obviously if you want to get to shipping early it means that what you want to be doing with your faction access a lot of the time is going to deliver supplies and a very obvious route for Shadam to take is double deliver supplies deep desert ring shipping it's simple it's effective it's very very deadly but Players that have played this game and are experienced will know that's exactly what you want to do. And players will take actions to stop you from going because they know how deadly the ring is here. It's such an obvious enabler of your ring and it's such an obvious place for it to go. So players will try and stop you from doing this. Of course, the other side of the ring is what do you do the ring when you can't get up to accept contract, when you don't have access to these various areas, and you've got to end up start sending it to these city spaces. Well, this is where it starts getting awkward because, of course, again, you can't deploy any units to the conflict once you put the ring down. So while you can recruit with Arakeen, you can recruit at Siege and do stuff at Razor Station, you can't send any of it in. It just gets stuck in your garrison, which can be very awkward in. Indeed. One thing that is well worth noting for uh, Carino is this also applies to makers. And it means that Carino really much struggles as a combat leader because every other round, one of your actions is going to be sent not deploying into the conflict. And that towards the back end of the game can be very, very awkward indeed. And you're going to have to try and work out something to do that. I have had a couple of games as Carino where the first round or the second round, first time I've pulled the ring, I've just not played the ring at all because it's more important for me to get into a conflict. And I think players have an expectation of expecting Shadam to play his ring early because it is very effective, definitely. But that means that you can sometimes catch them napping a little bit. They'll go into conflict, but not as much as they should do. And suddenly you can get Arakeem with your recon and punish them. So it's a very powerful ring ability. 
but it definitely has some awkwardness and it means occasionally you might have to consider just not playing it at all. If you can get your reign to accept contract and peer of privilege to these spots here, you're absolutely laughing. But sometimes it just turns out really awkward. So for tip number four, let's talk about seat position. Uh, and for reasons we've already discussed, particularly trying to get to double deliver supplies to make your way to deep desert and then shipping. Very popular seats for Shadam is going to be seats two and three. These are the most reliable places where you're going to feel that you can draw one faction access, for example, go deliver supplies. Because player one is very likely still going to go Fremen, especially if it's a combat warrior like uh, Gurney or Muad'Dib, Fade as well. They're still going to be making their way over to here because of the power of maker hooks so shadam in second seat is very popular for this third seat can also generally work as well second might go here might not do you gotta bear in mind obviously the further back in this order you go the less likely you're going to get to the supplies so it makes fourth feet seat for shadam a little tricky because it's very easy and very likely that you're going to get blocked here on one of your first two rounds and that's going to stunt your progression of the game fairly early um i would also say as of shadam avoid first seat if you can because first First seat's really awkward because, again, you're kind of meant to go Fremen. Letting player two uh, or player three get guaranteed or near guaranteed worm access and getting worms in potentially round two is kind of insane and not really worth bypassing. And you're going to get dragged into combat and you don't really want to be doing that as Shadam. Uh, you want to kind of, like, basically build up to begin with, wait for, like, your matching combat somewhere in the mid-game, go heavy for that, and then try and negotiate your way from there. So, for tip number five, my wildcard tips. This is more of a general summation of, I think, things you want to bear in mind for playing Carino. First off, and I think this is very important, is action economy is absolutely key to getting the most out of Carino. And I can speak of this of personal experience as well from the North Carolina Invitational. The quarterfinal games that I played uh, with uh, Ryan from Man of People, uh, Sneaker Dead, and also Paul Denham. I played as Shadam. And I got off to a pretty strong start, truth be told. But unfortunately i just completely collapsed mid game uh it was probably the worst game of uprising i played all weekend truthfully from like round three and a half onwards which is the way it goes sometimes but shadam really uh you've got to get action economy you've got to get access to sword master because if you're not getting your sword master all game it means that every round or at least every other round you're meant to be using your ring and you can't deploy into conflict, which means that you're not taking advantage of the variety of rewards here. You're never challenging for extra resources and points and stuff like that. The alternative is you're just not using your ring. And if you're not using your ring as Carino, something has gone really badly wrong. I did suffer from a couple of really bad weird draw outs which made my moves very awkward and sometimes that also happens but if you've got that third agent and that sword master there then it's it becomes much less of an issue you're prone to having those troubles when you've only got two agents so get your sword master as soon as you can the other thing I'll note for Shadam is pay attention to what your opening Imperium rows are. I think it's very important for Shadam. Because of his innate power to go heavily for alliances, you need to make an estimation of how much competition you think you're going to get. So take this row, for example, here. Now, this is not a bad row, but any stretch of imagination, some pretty solid cards here. But notably, there's very little faction access, or at least if it's a danger rhetoric, it's a one-time use, and that's done and dusted. So if you're playing a Shadam here, if you can get access to shipping especially, you're going to feel pretty confident of getting hold of a couple of alliances now compare that road to something a bit like this there's obviously a little bit of a you know obviously the, the two sides of the coin but if a row like this exists you're going to have a much harder time securing alliances fairly safely your enemies gonna be a lot more unpredictable with faction access and what's gonna be going and it's gonna be hard for you to get multiple alliances so bear in mind if the row's looking kind of ugly and there's loads of faction stuff going on maybe shadam might not be the pick for you so that's going to do it for us here at top five. Uh, admittedly, there's more information I could have put in here for Karina. And be fair, several of the leaders as well could have put in loads more. But I want to keep these videos to about 10 to 15 minutes, not really exceeding too much of that. Um, so these, you know, kind of brief, fairly decent introductions into leaders and how they generally work. And yeah, Carino, I think, is very capable. If left to his own devices, can be really devastating. Uh, if he is in the game, you've got to keep an eye on what he's doing. And again, if he's going to get access to that shipping, you're going to have to make sure to uh, prevent him from getting there. Don't let him get in the first place. If he's got access, block it with your agents, block it with your spies. Keep him away from the spot. Very, very powerful for him. 
If you like what we do here at Hidden Assets, then please, please feel free to follow and support us here on the channel. Uh, we got streams. I've obviously got more content and more for this series coming along, uh, looking at the rest of the leaders. Next up is going to be Lady Jessica, which I'm going to do my best to get into a 15-minute video, but there's, there's a lot going on with Lady Jessica. Thanks for watching, everyone, though. Take care. See you soon.